Hey, everybody. Um, so uh, all, uh, a lot of the directors and I, we're going to share different ideas. We're just going to kind of jump from screen to screen, but I am first. And so, um, so what I wanted to share with you was, and I, you know, I kind of trained a little bit on getting ready for summer with the kids and we're going to be using, um, today we're sharing kitchen hacks as well as like just summer home hacks, right? Things that you can do to make your life easier in the summer. So one of the things that um, I do regularly in the summer for my kids is I make sure that when they're playing outside and all that good stuff, I have like a pitcher of water out there for them. I have a cooler with water bottles in it for them so they don't have to go in and out of the house, in and out of the house, right? They're letting flies in and just... It's just it's, it's sometimes their feet are wet or muddy or whatever. And so they go in and out of the house. I have one peeking over my shoulder right now. Um, so, um, so that is something that has always helped as well as having things ready to go. So like we think about packing our kids lunches for schools, right? For school when school's in session. But I also do it. He's such a monkey. I also do it. What a goof. Um, I also do it whenever um, in the summer, then that way their lunches are ready to go at the beginning of the day, especially if I know it's going to be a particularly busy day for me, I'll make sandwiches beforehand and put them in the fridge so that they're there. Um, for that guy, he can't uh, pour his own milk and stuff yet. He may, he misses more than he gets into the cup. So I have cups in there ready to, to go for him. Um, but having things like that ready to go so they can grab and go is huge. Um, a couple of years ago, I got a great tip from Jenny Cheatham because she raised five girls in a house. And, um, and so I... She gave me the tip of um, having bins for each child, right? So I have snack bins for each child and we fill it up at the beginning of the week and they know that that's their budget of snacks for the week. And so um, when we first started it, they would blow through them and then they wouldn't really have many snacks for the rest of the week. But now they've learned to kind of like budget their snacks, right? And they can go and help themselves. Um, so when you see me do demos in the kitchen up on my rack, that's where they are. They're labeled one, two, and three because <laughs> I didn't have the letters to spell out their names. So I just, but I had numbers on my little label sheet. So I labeled them one, two, and three. And threes have now moved down to the table so that James can help himself. And I empowered him by just putting a stack of bowls there so he can help himself to all of his snacks and things like that. It's made a big difference in our house of them not just like interrupting me every five minutes for beverages, snacks, and all that kind of good stuff. All right, so Nikki is next for us and I am gonna send this over to her with her tip. Hi guys, so my tip is staying cool in the summer with some fun smoothies, but I'm gonna teach you guys how to use a smoothie idea to grow your business. So Amy Garner and I've been scrolling a lot, doing some Facebook party ideas, and we stumbled upon the Tupperware blog that we used to use all the time. So if you go on Google and you type in Tupperware blog, and you click on it, there's a bunch of information on the sustainability with Tupperware, different recipe ideas, different tips on the product. So all those items that you can use to grow your business. The one that I found, that was really cool. It's called Seven So Good Power Chef Smoothie. So it gives you seven recipe ideas. So I thought you could do a seven day Facebook party with a smoothie idea every night and either go live for that or record it, post the video, get your kids involved because it's the with the power chef. That'd be super fun for you to put all the ingredients in there and then they just have to pull it. They get So it's like a kids in the kitchen too. Do something fun you can do at lunchtime with them for a little treat with them, maybe before bed. You could also do it in your VIP group to grow that audience. You can post like maybe a picture of yourself with this thing. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm getting ready for summer and I want to give you the top seven recipe ideas that you and your family are going to love. But wait for it. They're also healthy. Who wants Who wants it? And you're going to get all the comments coming down, but you're not going to go live on your personal page. You're not going to go live on your business page for everyone to see it. You're going to go live or post them in your VIP group to get them that audience into your VIP group to grow that group because you're making it exclusive. Like Lynn always says, you want something with exclusive and you want them to be in that VIP community, the only way to make them feel special is to give them something different. If you're posting all the same things on your personal page, on your business page, and in there, I do that a lot, but I also make my VIP group a little special just because I want them to feel that they're getting value and that'd be a really fun way to grow your business and have your kids help you too. And I have the smoothie recipes posting on Champion for you guys at about nine o'clock. 
Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Nikki. All right. Next, we're moving to Kelly, one of our newest directors. Hi, Kelly. Hi, guys. So I have a few of my favorite products here. The stack cooker, of course, and the freezer mates. They are my go-to for everything. What I do is I don't like to stand there and brown my hamburger meat. So I crumble it up in here, microwave it for three minutes. You mix it up, put it back in for three more minutes and it's completely cooked. Now, Manel is actually the one that told me I needed to start doing this because um, I had a surgery and had my gallbladder removed and can't have Greeks, okay? And I was getting very upset stomachs from the hamburger meat. So, and I'm not gonna bore you with the cooking part because I already have some done. So done six minutes in the microwave. You make sure you put it in the colander so you get the grease out. This is all the grease from one pound of hamburger, almost a cup of grease. That's just not acceptable. I buy the big packages from Sam's Club and I stack them. I have like three or four sets of the stackables. I stack them up. Sometimes I wanna make a meatloaf, so I'm not gonna brown it. I'm just gonna stick it in a freezer mate, stick it in the freezer. And when I'm ready to eat, I just pop it out and warm it up. That's it. Awesome, Kelly. What a huge time-saving tip. And yes, absolutely. Cut as much of that fat out as possible. It'll definitely upset your stomach <laughs> after that surgery. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. All right. So next, we're moving on to Lori Morris. Are you ready, Lori? So um, actually, it's kind of good that I'm following Kelly because Kelly... Um, it was talking about browning her ground meat in the pre in the stack cooker, which is what I do um, to make tacos or to make any kind of meat dish. Um, but I, what I do with mine before I use it or before I freeze it, I use my um, Power Chef, and I put the meat in here. I do it with sausage as well, and I do it with ground chicken. Um, but after it's cooked, you put it in here and give it a few pulls. Um, so you don't have to stand over the stove and break up your meat. Use your power chef to finally, finely chop your meat, and then you can use it right away, or you can put it in our freezer mates um, in one pound portions and pull it out whenever you need it, need it to make tacos. Um, tacos are quick and easy in the summer. Do the same thing with your cheese. Grind, you know, use our um, grate master or shredder to grate your cheese up. And put a little, if you're going to freeze it, put a little cornstarch in your cheese and freeze that as well. You could just pull it out uh, for taco night on Tuesdays or whatever night you're going to have tacos. So I use my power chef a lot to, before I put things in the freezer, before I serve. So that's my tip. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lori. All right. So next we are going to Loretta. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys some uh, summertime freezer fun hacks, but quite honestly, you can use these freezer hacks all year long, okay? Um, but especially in the summertime, because it's one less thing we have to do is prepping something. Um, and uh, there's so much you can do with the freezer and the freezer is um, nature's pause button. So think of it like this, the way you put it in the freezer is the way it's gonna come out, all right? And uh, Pam shared with us the other day um, how she freezes her avocados. Did you guys know you could freeze your avocados? Do you ever have like a recipe and you need a quarter, you need a half and, and then you put it away and you forget about it and it's all brown and yucky and you, and you waste it? Guys, you can either dice them up, put them in your freezer, you can mash them up, put them in your ice cube trays. You could actually go ahead and make some guacamole with it and freeze it. It is gonna come out bright green and not dull and, and um, brown like if you just put it in the fridge, okay? So so any of that, like who's got the banana in the in the bowl <laughs> on your countertop that has that one brown spot and um, no one's eating it. Mom, it's got a brown spot. I'm like, oh, it's good. So I don't waste it. 
uh-uh, no, I take those bananas, I chop them up and I put in the freezer mates and I use them for my, um, for my smoothies, all right? So go get those recipes that Nikki shared with you. And again, use this to build parties and attendance um, in your VIP groups. Don't share these hacks all over. Just ask them what, if they'd like them and then invite them and funnel them into your groups and, and parties. Um, but the frozen banana is perfect in your smoothie uh, chopper and some almond milk and some other fresh berries with that, or I mean frozen berries, right guys? Um, speaking of berries, go ahead and freeze your fruits, freeze them. Um, and then you can use your ice shaver on your great master system, get the ice shaver cone. Guys, I just went to this Memorial Day thing and they had a Hawaiian ice truck there. Now we didn't have to pay for them because we were blessed and someone paid for them all, but they charge like $3 for this little cup of ice with some flavoring in it. Guys, make your own fresh, healthy, no syrup stuff. Um, and use our ice shaver and make your own Hawaiian ice, all right, or Italian ice, whatever you want to call it, but yum, yum, yummy. Um, you can freeze everything from sauces to uh, gravies, leftover marinades. Don't let anything go to waste. Your fresh herbs all summer long that you're going to be, you're going to be growing, okay, or, or buying. Um, you can either put them in water in your ice cube trays or olive oil, okay. You can put your pestos down the side of there. I love Okay, there is always an ice cube tray with my cold brew coffee <laughs> and my uh, cold brew iced tea, all right? So why use regular ice cubes when I, I don't like it watered down, all right? So in the summertime, I love my cold brew with the, um, the uh, cold brew ice cubes. Eggs, did you know you could freeze eggs? Same thing. Now, they, they need to be cracked, all right? Do not put um, shelled eggs in the freezer, okay? They need to be cracked. You can separate them. So if you want to do a tray with just egg whites and um and another tray with uh, egg yolks, because some recipes you need uh, yolks and you need whites, or you can just freeze the whole egg inside of your ice cube trays. Fun, fun, fun. Leftover gravies. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Did you know you could freeze buttermilk? Do you ever have those recipes? You need this much buttermilk, but the containers are this big? Go ahead and freeze it. Um, tomato paste. So, so no waste. Use your freezer mates, use your ice cube trays, and save yourself a ton of money. Oh, don't forget baby food. <laughs> All right, Pam is sharing how I actually is making some amazing, good, good food. And it's so good that Pam wants to eat it. <laughs> and I'm always freezing that leftover, um, uh, you know, soup, stock, any of that stuff, L little vegetables left over, you know, that little scoop of vegetables that nobody will eat. Throw them in the freezer and start building that vegetable soup and throw it in your vegetable soup when you make it. Oh, rice. I just used it tonight. Okay. I'll always use my smart steamer the rice maker section, and I'm going to make rice. And if you want a good fried rice, you want a good stir fry with rice. I like crunchy rice. I don't like mushy rice. And when you freeze it, and then I just pop them out and, and, and fry them up. Oh my goodness, you got that good crunchy rice. So I didn't have time to make rice this today. And I had to hurry up before this. And so I had that frozen rice in the freezer. So your freezer is your best friend this summer. Actually, all year long. I need to find a freezer that fits myself because if you go in the way you come, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much, Loretta. Absolutely. All right. So next we have Melissa Tenney. I'm coming to you. You ready? I am. My tip and hacks are about watermelon. I don't know about you guys or your kids, but my granddaughter loves watermelon. So I have a watermelon here. You can tell it's not quite the time of year for it, but I just wanted to show you a little bit. Um, it is a smaller watermelon and the easiest way to cut up your watermelon is to sort of put it into a block. So you wanna cut off the back side and you're going to make it flat, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to cut off the rest of the rind. Then once you're ready to go, it's super easy. You may know the best thing you need is a sharp knife. Tupperware is all set. They have an amazing knife sharpener and it actually sharpens both um, straight edge knives and serrated knives. And you're not gonna be able to see it, but there almost looks like little teeth marks. That's the one for the serrated. It looks like two little rods. And then the one for the straight knives looks like um, little tablets almost. And all you do is you start at the base of the knife, you pull backwards about 20 times, 
Now you've got a sharp knife to cut your watermelon. Another tip I have is put one of our towels underneath your cutting board. You know watermelon, especially when it's in season, is going to be very, very juicy. You can do paper towels, but why waste the paper products when you can just use one of our microfiber drying towels and use that underneath your board. It also keeps your board from moving. So there's a good tip. And then my last tip on watermelon is, this is our 19 cup, that's a bowl, it's the medium size. We do not have the colander right now, but guys, if you can get this colander, it fits perfectly inside this bowl. You cut up your watermelon, you put it inside, the little feet on the bottom keeps the watermelon that you've cut from sitting in the juice, which, which keeps your watermelon fresher much longer. Now, if you can't get a hold of one of those colanders, you can also just do like, this is one of our small freezer mate lids. You can put that in the bottom. It doesn't take up a lot of room, serves the same purpose. Now, if you're getting a gigantic watermelon, which a lot of people do, you're gonna wanna go with one of our extra large Fridge Smarts. Now, we all know Fridge Smarts aren't necessarily designed for cut fruit, but they will hold cut fruit. So you just wanna put it on the closed setting because any fruits that are cut don't need a lot, they're considered light breathers. I also, even though this has the um, sort of the grid in the bottom, I take one of our microwavable reheatable plates and I put it in there because depending on how large, if you're just cutting like little pieces like this, it can still sit in the juice. So I put a microwave um, plate in the bottom and then that keeps it from sitting in the juice. Basically, when you cut up your watermelon, that's what you don't want it to do, and then it'll last longer for you. So those are my tips on cutting up watermelon to be ready for the summer. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melissa. That was incredible. Okay, so Jenny, you are next. Are you ready? Hi, guys. So I don't necessarily have food and kitchen tips. I have mom survival tips for the summer. Um, like Ellen said, I had five girls and they were 10 years apart. And one of the things that we had the hardest time with in the summer was getting everybody in the car at the same time when we had to go. And they all had ball games and they all had practices to get to and they weren't old enough to leave home by themselves. So when one person had to go, everybody had to go. Plus at that same time, my husband was in school in Alabama and we were living in Ohio. So Every two weeks, we left on Friday, drove the 12 hours to Alabama to see him for the weekend, and then we'd come back late Sunday night. Now, there's packing involved whenever you have children like that, and I learned really fast, and this is a great tip for summer. You know that book bag they brought home from the last day of school that now they're going to throw under their bed? They don't want to use it next year, but they don't really have anything to do with it all summer long. Well, we packed things in that, that every time they got in the car, they could either leave in the car or they could grab it and go. It had snacks, it had something to drink in it. Um, when they were younger, it had a change of clothes in it because that became necessary. Um, they would have a couple of books. Uh, and now you could, my kids were so underprivileged. They did not have Tupperware. So we had like bags of things, but, and they didn't have all the cool electronic stuff that your kids have. But you know, you get in a backpack is a great place if they leave stuff in there, like if they leave their iPad or their phone or whatever it is they have, leave the charger in there with the thing so that when you get halfway to where you're going and they're starting to, their, their instrument is starting to die, they have a charger with them and you're not going crazy trying to find one or share them or anything else. So that's my tip, pack the backpacks, whether you have one kid, five kids, more than that, good luck, but pack the backpacks. They know what they look like. They know which one is theirs. They've been carrying it all year to school and just make sure, and as they get a little older, make them responsible for what's inside it, that it's okay. It's okay to tell your kids, make sure you know what's in that backpack and grab it and bring it with you. 
but that was like a real lifesaver for me most of the time because especially when we went away for the weekend, everything they took was in the backpack. Awesome. I love it, Jenny. What a great, very practical tip. That's what I see. That's what I love about Jenny. She gives me these practical hacks that I use in my house all the time. <laughs> this is the second time 